of control. And, uh, but I want you to know that there's a far a humongous difference mm -hmm. between the natural self-control and what God calls self-control or what we're calling tonight the spiritual fruit of self-control. And the natural, see, is what we can do in our own natural abilities and mm -hmm. in our flesh. But the spiritual fruit of self-control is the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to enable us to follow the Lord rather than our fleshly desires. And even in the mm -hmm. midst of difficult situations. And see, I have seen even in my past where I was trying to do the right thing and, uh, but I wound up not doing the right thing. And, and one incident uh, that I remember very well was uh, years ago when my children were little, they were all going to school and so I was, I had the day off and I was here at home and I, I spent the whole day uh, with the Holy Spirit and just communing with the Holy Spirit and uh, the Lord and worshiping. And, and, and I just had a wonderful time and I was fasting and praying. And, and then the children come home and they start fighting. And, and so I get angry. <laughs> and I thought, how could that be? I've been fasting. I've been in the presence of the Lord. And uh, yet I couldn't even control my own emotions or uh, the anger or the expression of the anger with my own children. And because I was trying to do it in my natural ability, that's the problem. And, and I didn't understand the concepts that the Lord has taught us over the years and how to apply it. It's not about our own ability. And I've seen a lot of people that that uh, try to live very godly lives, very holy lives, and they live for like that for a while, and and then they fall to a big temptation. Mm -hmm. uh, are they in some kind of a problem, and they respond a way that they don't even want to themselves? Of course, uh, uh, Paul wrote about it in uh, Romans seven uh, when he said uh, that uh, I don't do what I want to do. I know what mm -hmm. to do, but I don't do it. That, and I know what not mm -hmm. to do, but I do what I'm not supposed to do. See, he was trying to do it in his flesh. And uh, most people try to operate in their flesh to control their emotions. And everyone uh, can be successful to some measure, to some degree in controlling their emotions. But, but the spiritual fruit of self-control is different than that because it's not by your ability, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. But we have to understand that in order for the fruit of the Spirit uh, to operate in our life. And so I have about four points I want to make. And the first one is to give you an introduction uh, to the spiritual fruit of self-control. And we see uh, a big list here of nine fruit in Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23, and it ends with, uh, in some translations say self-control and some temperance. And so we'll look at those uh, in a moment, but I want Sherry first just to read these two verses. So we see it's a fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And before I go to the scripture, I just want to welcome everyone. Uh, Yame from, from China and, and Lucy and Luke and and Mary and Victoria and and I'm assuming in in George joined us. Uh, little Luke, new song. New song. New song, new song. new song is with us. Yes, okay. and so we welcome all of you. Galatians five twenty two through twenty three. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness self-control against such there is no law okay. i think that's an important point right okay there. so in other words there's no limit on it you can have as much as you want no limit on these fruit and it's talking about nine different fruit but there are lots of different listings of fruit in in the bible but we see here uh self-control and it's also called uh, temperance 
and it, it still is very similar to what we think about in the natural, but it's about our passions uh, for uh, physical pleasure. It's, it's controlling our passions by the power of the Holy Spirit. So whether we're using the word self-control or temperance, and so um, most of this message today, I'll be using the word self-control, but some translations would use temperance. But the idea behind it, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit to control our passions of uh, physical pleasure, related to physical pleasure. And even in difficult situations, and like I said, I know of people who have gone years and uh, trying to live a holy life, and then when big temptations come or big problems come, they're, they're not able to continue because they're trying to do it in their own flesh. But it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, now the next mess, uh, passage I'd like Sherry to read is from Colossians 3. It's another listing of the fruit uh, of the Spirit, uh, and even though uh, self-control is not specifically and explicitly mentioned here, it tells us some other information about the fruit of the Spirit, how they all relate together, and mm -hmm. they are bound together by the love of God, and that's real mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. See, we uh, if we're only concerned about natural self-control, uh, then we don't realize we have to connect it with love and gentleness and God and goodness and kindness and all of those things relate together. Once we understand that, that gives us a different perspective on how to implement and operate in the spiritual fruit of self-control. So Sherry, read this, please. This is Colossians 3, uh, verse 12 and verse 14. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And then in verse 14, in addition to all of these, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Okay. Hallelujah. So again, I just want to say that all of these fruit, spiritual fruit, fit together and work together. And, and so this is where a lot of people fail and fall down uh, with uh, the idea of self-control is that they think that operates by itself. But if we, when we realize we also have to be gentle, we have to be loving, we have to be mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind, and, and, and we're joyful, okay? So how do we tap in to the spiritual fruit of the Holy Spirit? Well, a, a good way that I look at it that helps me is that when we um, encounter a difficult problem or a difficult situation, mm -hmm. don't respond or react immediately to it, but go into your secret place. Mm -hmm. Now, where mm -hmm. is your mm -hmm. secret place? Well, it's a place inside of you mm -hmm. where you meet with the Lord, where you meet with his spirit, where you meet with the Father, uh, where there's a place of uh, hope and joy and peace and love. Mm -hmm. And so everything feeds on together and it all works together. But see, if we're, if we experience a problem and we immediately react to that problem, we haven't taken a time to step back into our secret place where we have joy because the joy is going to give us the strength mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, and it's a place of peace mm -hmm. and, and it's a place uh, where we can gather our thoughts and not only our thoughts, but the thoughts of the Lord and see how things are working together. And so, first of all, when you experience a problem that you want to use self-control uh, to operate and you want it to operate in your life, go into your secret place. It doesn't have to be a physical mm -hmm. place. It just, you go into the presence of God and, and, mm -hmm. and you let his love flow through you. And when his love is flowing through you, you're going to have mm -hmm. love and it's going to be a, it's going to set the tone for your response to the problem. And you're going to have joy and that gives you strength. You're going to have strength. 
and, and you're coming at it from peace. Mm -hmm. And so you, you don't just immediately react uh, to a problem, a difficult situation. Maybe somebody comes to you and, and pressures you for an answer. Well, tell them, I'll have to pray about it. I'll have to think about that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not ready to respond to that. Or, or if your children come to you and, and start screaming at you or, or somebody screams at you, it, you just go into your secret place before you respond. Otherwise, you'll react out of your flesh. Mm -hmm. And you'll want mm -hmm. to control your flesh, but you're, you cannot use flesh to control, control flesh. flesh. It's a spiritual battle. And so you have, it's the Holy Spirit that enables you to overcome the flesh and the fleshly desires. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody yells and screams at you, calls you a liar, calls you uh, names or whatever, see, your immediate uh, response is going to want to defend yourself and, and to go after them with the same intensity they come after you. But the real process I want to instill in you is that you go first into your secret place. You gather the other fruit together. You operate out of love, out of joy, out of compassion, out of, compassion, out of kindness. And so you respond differently. That's how you respond with the spiritual fruit of self control. Mm, hallelujah. You know, they hallelujah. all work together. Don't be out there on your own in the natural mm. and just trying to control situations with your ability. Because when you take the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit all into account and you take all of the spiritual fruit into mm. account and all of it wrapped up in love, then your response is going to be different than an immediate reaction to the situation. And also, it, it intensifies the power of God within you uh, when you bring all of those things together. Uh, and it's just uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the fruit. When you bring all of that together, then it, it produces much power. That's right. Good. It produces much power. Okay. So... Here is the, the third point I want to make, and this comes out of relationships. It's, it, this fruit, spiritual fruit, uh, comes out, what's the source of it? What is the source of uh, this spiritual fruit? It, it is the relationships that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. have had in eternity. Mm -hmm. The Father and Son and Holy Spirit have always had fellowship in eternity. They, that has been forever. They have had fellowship and their attributes, or we could say the attributes of God or the attributes of all of them and their relationships. See these terms, the spiritual fruit, all apply to relationships. Mm. They're, they're not in isolation and, and it's not about a person uh, who lives in isolation, never encounters anyone, how do we know that person has love? No, it's it's in our relationships. It's in interacting with others. That's when we know we have love. That's when we know we have joy. Mm -hmm. That's when we know we have peace and gentleness right. and kindness and all of these things and self-control. They're all words that relate to relationships. They're all forces mm -hmm. that relate late to relationships. They are built on relationships and these relationships have gone on in eternity. And so this becomes the character of the father, the character of the son, the character of the Holy Spirit. And that's, it was all came out of their relationships with each other. And they have this wonderful relationship. Mm -hmm. oh, hallelujah. So I want to Jerry, to read these verses. First John 1, uh, 1 through 3. Is okay. that correct? Yes. Now, see, this is John writing a letter to you, and he's saying, I've been in fellowship with the Father mm, and the Son and the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Spirit, <laughs> and I'm inviting you into that Woo! relationship, Hallelujah. the same relationship that I've had. 
See, the word of God and who became Jesus, he, he always existed in eternity. And I touched him. I saw him. All of the disciples uh, went with him. We fellowshiped with him. And we have a fellowship now with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we invite all of you into that same fellowship. And that's the source of the spiritual fruit, all of the spiritual mm, fruit. Mm, okay, mm. Sherry, read this. Yeah, and I just I just think about uh, John. He was called the beloved, uh, the disciple that leaned on the breast of Jesus, and and he was he was close to him. He had a relationship, and so this is this is a beautiful message, Freddie. Beautiful. First John one. You know, and I'm just going to say this right now that we do not have to depend on medication. We do not have to depend on things to get us through the day. And we don't have to depend on, um, you know, a course in anger management. We don't have to depend on anything that the world has. If we are, we if we come into this relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, then that's all we need. That is all that we need Hallelujah. you know and we deal with people every single day that have lost hope that have lost encouragement they have they've lost the uh the enemy has come to steal from them and and so they're turning to other things or to manage their emotions to manage to their self-control and yeah. I depressant yes antidepressants and, and so this is the god's remedy this is if, it if you have fear you have anxiety if Hallelujah. You have depression, this is it this is this is the re god's remedy that's right all of those things this is his answer his answer to it i don't know about you but i'm receiving this message today i need this message and i believe that every single one of us do first john one Verses one through three. What was from the beginning? He's talking about Jesus, the incarnate word of God always existed. What we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands See, they concerning touched, the word of life. They touched Jesus. Hallelujah. And the life was revealed. And we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was revealed to us, what we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you may have fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Okay, so here's John writing a letter to all of us. He, he walked with Jesus. And who was Jesus? Well, he was the son in eternity. He was the word in eternity. And he was manifested in the flesh uh, 2,000 years ago. But he had always been the word of God, the word of life. He had always been wisdom. He'd always been the, uh, just the essence of God and his life. And so John had a relationship with him. He touched him. He ate with him. He he slept with him. He 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 spent time with him. He heard his words, and, and he saw how important that relationship was. And, and now he's inviting all of us into that same relationship. That's that secret place I was talking about. Come into that, and it's within you. It, it's not in yeah. some physical place. It's within you. Come into that relationship with. With the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's where you'll find joy. Amen. That's where you find peace. That's where you'll find contentment and mm -hmm. and excitement and hope. It's that in that secret Hallelujah. place. Hallelujah. In there in that relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now you, we also remember that Jesus prayed that we would come mm -hmm. into this relationship. Mm -hmm. That's what John 17, what he was doing in John 17 when he lifted up his high priestly prayer. Uh, and he said, let, let them have the same relationship yes, we yes, have. Yes. Okay. In John 17, 22 through 24. The glory which you have given me, I also have given to you, so that I, they may be one, 
just as we are one. Oh, it's about being one, being in that relationship, being there with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, just like they have been out in all of eternity, and they've inviting us in. Jesus is praying that you can go into that relationship. I also want to say this right now because the Spirit is just, is just tugging at my heart. And that is, we cannot live in our, our intellect. We cannot live there. I know that many of you have a, have a job, you work in the, in the, in the workplace, but let me say this to you. Some of you are in school. Um, you cannot live in your intellect. That's what the Holy Spirit just said to me. You cannot live there. You live in the presence of Almighty God. That's where you live. That's where you will grow. That's where you will be able to be who you are in Christ Jesus is in him. In him we live and move and have our being. Amen. Amen. It says, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity so that the world may know that you sent me. That's what the world is looking for. The world is hurting. The world is in chaos. The world needs you. The world needs us. Oh, hallelujah. They need us to be strong and they need us to, to be so uh, much light that, and that's from being with the Lord. That's from being with the Amen. Lord. Amen. So Jesus prayed for us to be there. He wanted us to have the same relationship that he has had in eternity he, with the Father and yes. the Spirit. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given to me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given to me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. Oh. If you want to see his glory, you've got to be where he is. Amen. Hallelujah. I Amen. love that. I love that. In eternity, they have had this very special relationship, and now they've opened it up. And said, Oh, you're, yes, you're invited. Come on, come you're on. invited into this yes, relationship hallelujah. that we have had throughout eternity. eternity. And Thank in you, that, Jesus. the attributes that you'll find are love and joy and peace and long suffering and, and self control and self control. Self -control. Spiritual fruit of self control. Yes. Not your flesh controlling flesh. Okay, remember mm. I said there were four points I wanted to make. And the first one, what was just to introduce it and show you where the verses are about self-control. And then I wanted to talk to you about the source. And now I want to go, this is my third point. It's about the roots. Where are your roots? Mm, mm, okay. Mm, mm, now, mm, mm. why is this important? Well, because it all started in the garden. Mm -hmm. oh, in hallelujah. the garden of Eden. In the beginning. In, in the, the beginning. Of, there was a garden and there were two trees. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they looked good. We could uh, eat from both of those trees. Both of those trees. One of them was the tree of life, life, and the other was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now I know that a lot of people say, "Well, I'm good, and I eat from the good, the knowledge of the good tree of the good. I I only eat off of the good side." But what's <laughs> what's interesting <laughs> is the tree of the knowledge of good, good and, and evil, evil only has one root system uh -huh. and it is evil yes see this is the basic conflict that has gone on uh since the foundation of the earth and yes. it's between darkness and light mm -hmm. and if you choose the tree of life so you live in the light and you overcome the darkness but if you tree if you choose the tree to eat the good off of the tree of the knowledge. If you eat the good knowledge and the knowledge off of the good tree, its root is dark and dangerous. There's only one root system for that tree. And although it produces good fruit, uh, on one side, on one side, it looks good. It looks yeah, real good. Yeah, the apple looked real good. And, uh, but 
You know, God said you eat from that tree. And that's uh -huh. what Sherry was talking about a while ago. You cannot live from the intellect. Yeah. If you eat from that tree, he said, you're going to die. It's going to bring destruction. It's the classic battle that has gone on from the foundation of the world. That's darkness against light. Mm -hmm. And we have to choose light mm -hmm. and choose life. And, well, and Joshua, also, Joshua okay. said, I set before you. you this day oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. life and death, mm -hmm. light and darkness. What are you going to choose? You have to make this choice today. It's an everyday choice. And you might say, oh, I'm good. And I eat the knowledge of good and uh, but there's only one root system mm -hmm. in that tree and it's all darkness. Well, now think about Adam and Eve when they ate of that tree <clears throat> that God told them not to eat of. Not only did they lose their clothing, they lost their, the glory of God. They lost the fellowship the with fellowship, God. They lost the fellowship. They lost the fellowship with God and they lost uh, that his glory that's what they were covered in they walked in his glory they that. walked in the cool of the evening uh with with the heavenly father and, and and that's what if we if we eat of that tree then even though we eat on the good part it's still like brother fred said the root system is still Darkness. dark Okay, so have we read these verses? No. Here? no. From Genesis, read these, no. please. Genesis the 2, 8 through 9. The Lord planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there he placed a man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God caused every tree to grow that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the middle of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. When they were, when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it might have been good, it might have looked good, it might have tasted good. Yeah. But they were expelled from, from the, the garden. garden. Okay. Now you might say, well, that was just a uh, history, and that's a long time ago. But you know, the Bible tells us that the tree of life still exists. Yes. And we can still eat from the tree of life and have some mm. verses. Uh, three pro and in Proverbs, Proverbs. I want to share to read that say we can still eat from the tree of life. And so no, the question is, what tree are we eating from? Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3.18. <clears throat> Wisdom. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happier those who hold on to her. Now, this is not knowledge. This is not the world's knowledge. This is wisdom. So this, is, this is God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, Jesus Christ himself. Okay. Next and then one. Proverbs 1130, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Okay. Are you the righteous? Back to the fruit. Are you the righteousness of God and the spirit of the spiritual fruit of self-control is a fruit of righteousness, is a fruit of mm. righteousness. Proverbs. And it will give you the tree of life. It's the mm, from yeah. the tree of life. Okay, and one more. Pro Proverbs. Proverbs 13, 12. Desire. When it comes. Fulfilled is a tree of life. Okay, so if, you, if you're not getting your prayers met, then there's these delays that then you're not fellowship and you're not partaking of that but when when you understand how god's kingdom operates and you operate in the kingdom and you're getting the desires of your heart that is eating of the tree, the tree of, of life, life. Thank and you. you might say well that again that's just all all that is old testament but you know it goes on to revelation and read yeah, there's right. a tree of life in revelation revelation 2 7 <clears throat> the one who has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To the one who overcomes, I will grant for them to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Hallelujah. That's his presence. And we can be there. We don't have to die to get there. We don't, we don't have to die physically and, and go, go to heaven to be in the presence of God. We can be 
right there, right now. And I believe that we are. We are in his presence right now. He is here. The Lord would say, I am your father. I am the one who loves you when no one else loves you. I am the one who died for you. I was the one. I was Jesus on the cross and I died for you. I rose again for you and I give you the power to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hear from the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 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 So where, where are your roots? That's the question. Mm, mm, where mm, are mm. your roots? We see it all the way from the beginning, the book of beginnings, Genesis, all through the Old Testament, through even to Revelation, to uh, wrap up the Bible. We see the tree of life. And if you are an overcomer, and how do you overcome? Well, one of the things you have to produce, the spiritual fruit, the spiritual the fruit, fruit of, of self-control. Self and if you do that, mm. then you'll become an overcomer. An over you'll overcome the temptations. You'll overcome the difficult situations. You'll overcome the problems if you're uh, if you're producing the spiritual fruit of self control. Okay, so I've I've said I've got four points, and I've covered three. I've introduced it, and then I've talked about the source of the spiritual fruit and now uh, now we've talked about the roots of it so we can all think about where are we eating are we eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and that's the darkness or are we eating from the tree of life mm -hmm. and here's my fourth point that there to put it all into context there are three other verses that talk about self-control and uh it's things that paul wrote that peter wrote and what paul said and so i want to go to what paul said about uh to titus he wrote this to titus but of course it's all it's to all of us and one of the things i want you to see here is that um the spiritual fruit of self-control is not a heavy burden for us to, mm, that we have to, discipline. that that we have to uh, bear. It's not. It's his burdens are easy. They are light, mm. and and this is different than diligence. It's different than discipline. This spiritual fruit of self control we're talking about today is different than discipline. And a lot of people say, "Well, I'm a very disciplined person, mm -hmm. and so I have self control," but we're not talking about no. that. We're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome uh, difficult no situations. situations, to overcome temptations. That's what the spiritual fruit of self-control is. It's not your ability. It's the power of the Holy Spirit operating through you. Let's see what Paul wrote to mm -hmm. Titus. Titus 1, 7 and 8. It says, God's steward is not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not overindulging in wine, not a bully, not greedy for money, but hospitable, loving what is good, self-controlled, righteous, holy, and disciplined. Okay, so here we see it. It's all of these fruit work together. That's the that's a really important point that you can get from this message that when you experience a problem, you experience accusations or you experience take temptations, don't go out there and try to control your flesh with your flesh, but you go to your secret place and get uh, muster up all of the forces of the spiritual fruit mm -hmm. love joy, joy peace bring, bring all of these things to bear on it and then respond then respond you're not responding out of your flesh but you're responding with the power of the holy spirit mm -hmm. and with all of the fruit of the spirit operating in your life now what did peter say what did peter say about self second peter one verses five and six supplement your faith okay listening wendy with a generous provision 
of moral excellence. Okay, that's morality. Mm -hmm. And moral excellence with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. They all work together. And self-control with patience. Okay. Patient mm -hmm. endurance. And patient endurance with godliness. Okay, now look at this. Uh, it, again, it's all of these fruit working together and self-control. The spiritual fruit of self-control is not patience. It's not perseverance. It's not endurance. That's something else. That's another fruit. That's something else. The fruit of the, so the spiritual fruit of self-control is the power of the Holy Spirit operating in you, enabling you to follow the Lord and not following the flesh, even in difficult situations. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're getting down to the last verse, the, the final verse, and uh, I want to explain it. Paul uh, talk, was defending himself before King, and his name was Felix. And uh, Felix uh, had a wife, and uh, uh, they uh, she appeared to be uh, a, a Jew and understand the Jewish uh, traditions and all, and so they were they were uh, uh, accepting of uh, Jewish kinds of conditions. And Paul, if he had been like a lot of other preachers, he could have given just a persuasive message that would endure them to him. Uh, and he and he could have said, "Oh, uh, be good and do good and get more." And he could have given all kinds of messages, but he gave a message, and it had self-control in it. He explained self-control to the man, and it frightened the king <laughs> Felix. And, and because and why is that? It's because Paul was wanting a response from the unbeliever. He didn't just give him a sweet message and say, oh, you're all right and everything you do is okay and and uh, God loves you and, uh, and everything is okay. No, he gave a message that would stir him up and lead him or he had to make a decision. Are you going to respond or not respond? And what he told him was about self-control, this fruit of self-control. And the reason I am ending here is that just like Paul's message called for a response, mm -hmm. this message calls for a response. When you hear about the spiritual fruit of self-control it requires a response from you. Don't be like Felix and say, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ponder this. I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to think about it some more." No, Paul's asking for a, a choice and a decision. Mm -hmm. and, and so, anytime this message is brought forth about spiritual fruit of self-control, it requires an action on the hearer's part. Are you going to operate in the spiritual fruit of self-control? Because now you know more about what it is. You've got to go into those re into that relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit before you respond, before you respond to your spouse or respond to mm -hmm. your children or respond to your parents or, or, your to, or your co-workers or your boss or the people that are accusing you of different things. Before you respond, you, you go into that secret place, into that relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son, and you find out what their response is and how all of those fruit uh, come into bear and go to your happy place. Go to that, that peaceful place. Go to that secret place. And when you step out of that and give a response, it'll be a response from, that the, Holy will, Spirit. from the Holy Spirit that will touch their hearts. Okay, Sherry, read this verse. Acts twenty four twenty five. 25. But as he was discussing righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. Felix became frightened and responded, go away, go away right now. And when I have an opportunity, I will summon you to come back. I've got to think about this. <laughs> I hope that's not your response. That's exactly. <laughs> exactly. It, it requires action and a decision on your part. 
Thank you for being here. I'm